Hey guys, today I want to show you how to prepare uh, text and objects for deep engraving with your fiber laser in this program. This is your engraving area. So everything that's outside of this area will not be engraved. It will not show an error, but it will stop engraving at this line. So always make sure the object is inside of these lines so you don't ruin your part. It happened to me one, uh, one time and since that day I know it. If you want to engrave text you can do it directly in this program. You click here and just click inside this area and as you can see we have a text. Here we can change the text, for example to some numbers. Here we can change the size, the height. Here we can change the font and here we can change the position. That's uh, useful because when we type in zero and we say apply, then the left upper edge is at the position zero. And in reality, at your laser, you will have a, a red point here. So it's very easy to align the part with the engraving. If you want to have the engraving in the middle, you can change here the uh, position that will be where you can type in the coordinates. When I press OK, you can see the, it shows me the, the position of the middle of the text. When I change this to zero, the middle of the text will be in the middle of the engraving area. Apply, as you can see, it's in the middle. So now our text is set up for engraving. When we press now mark, the laser will just engrave the thin outlines. We will not get a deep engraving. To get a deep engraving, we have to choose the object. If we have several objects in this area, we can do some deep engraving for one object and for the other object not. So you have to choose the preferred object and press hatch. Here we have the settings for the hatch. You find this in the, in the manual. These are my settings for deep engraving. What's super important is the auto rotate angle because the laser engraves in, for example, the horizontal direction. And if this is not enabled, the second pass will be in the same direction. So you will see lines. And this makes sure that the laser changes the angle of engraving. So here it's set uh, to 10 degree. So uh, when it engraves at, let's say, a horizontal, 90 degree, whatever, it will engrave uh, 100 degree at the next pass. So you will get a very even smooth surface. What's also important is that you choose here the pen. The pen uh, tells the hatch which laser settings are used. This means uh, the power of the laser, the engraving speed, the frequency, and so on. So it's important <coughs> that you choose different pens for different hatches. So otherwise you will have the same uh, settings and it will, it will not help you to have this option. So this uh, hatch, hatch one is for deep engraving and hatch two is used for, for cleaning the surface. Because when you're doing deep engraving, this area gets very dirty and the laser loses, loses power. It, can, it cannot reach the metal anymore. So hatch two is some kind of a cleaning pass with similar settings, but a different pen. So we have uh, the black pen for hatch one and the blue pen for hatch two. So now when we press OK, we will see that this, uh, this area is blue. That's what will be engraved. So now on the right side, we can choose the settings for each pen. Usually it's set to default. If we don't use this, otherwise we will use the default settings. That's not what we want. And then we will choose our pens. So for the black pen, we can set this to whatever we want. And then we can save it in the li library. For example, and now we have it here as a setting, it's saved. So when I press OK, we are using these settings. I have here my 
prepared setting for deep engraving. That's what I'm using for H1. As you can see, low speed, high power, frequency at 40. For, for the cleaning pass, I'm, I'm using my cleaning settings. As you can see, it's a much higher engraving speed and, and less power. So it, it cleans the surface. If you just want to have a white marking that's not deep, you can also use these settings, but you find this in the description of the manufacturer. So when we press now mark, this will be engraved. Ah, what I forgot to say, uh, at, at mark loop, we can adjust the number of passes that the laser makes. So usually I'm using like three or five for the deep engraving and, and two or three for the cleaning pass. That works best for me. But you can play with these settings. As long as you don't move the part, you can play around with the settings and, and it will always engrave exactly the same at the same position. If you want to engrave a logo, it's basically the same. What's important and what I didn't understand at the beginning is you need a vector file, an SVG file. So the program knows exactly where your logo begins and where it ends. That's the most important thing to get the deep engraving done. I've prepared a cult logo for deep engraving. I will insert this here. So we want the logo in the middle. So we say we want to choose the uh, center position of the logo. We set this to zero. Now the logo is in the middle. Here we can change the side, for example, to size to 15 millimeters. Ah, now I made a mistake because uh, this has, has to be locked. Otherwise, the relation between these two dimensions will be wrong. When I say now apply, you can see my logo is destroyed. So always make sure that you lock those dimensions. Now it's locked, we change it to 15 millimeters, apply, and as you can see the relation of, the, of both dimensions is perfect. As with the text, it will only engrave these thin lines. If you want to deep engrave, we use hedge. H1 is enabled, H2 also, and we are using the same pens. And, and, the, and the program is showing us where the laser is engraving. When the, the color of the pen is going to the outside, then you know your vector file is wrong. There's, there's something wrong, some, some line is not closed. This will not work. It, it really all, always engraves what you see on, the, on your desktop. So we press mark, 